Welcome to a code report video. This is a response video to the last video that I made entitled The Beauty of Algorithms, where I compared eight different programming languages, C++, Rust, Python, Wiwa, BQN, APL, Cap, Jello, and technically a ninth, Jelly. And this video is entitled Rust in parentheses and Haskell wins because I got a number of comments on that video. The top two languages that people felt I overlooked were Haskell. We've got user NewMade saying the lack of Haskell is painful. And within the replies to that comment, there's Dead Marshall saying Jay is sorely missing. And then the comment right after that, the second most upvoted comment was no Jay, two emojis, one surprised, one crying. And so I have to rectify that. But before we visit our Haskell and J solutions, which we are going to show, we've got to revisit Rust because frankly, our Rust solution is absolutely atrocious compared to what it could have been. But before we look at Rust, let's recap the problem. It was called arithmetic progression. You're given a sequence of integers or floating point numbers, and you need to determine whether you can rearrange this sequence into an arithmetic progression, which means a either increasing or decreasing sequence that has the same difference between adjacent elements. So the way that we're solving this is we're sorting our sequence, doing what we call a map adjacent or a diff or deltas to get the difference between each adjacent element. And then we check to see are all those differences between adjacent elements after sorting the same? If so, you do have a possible arithmetic progression. So this 13579 is an arithmetic progression. If we go back to the Rust solution that I showed in the previous video, this is what I showed. Not a single person in the comments pointed out what was an egregious oversight on my part. But luckily, two individuals on GitHub opened up pull requests. The first one, Illumin Phoenix, and the second one, Dave Wagner, hopefully I'm pronouncing those correctly, pointed out that there is, in fact, an all equal function in the iter tools library or crate, which we were already using, folks, for the sorted by. So we can replace our whole hand-rolled function with a call to all equal folks. And this is what we're talking about. Know your algorithms. I didn't know it. And shame on me for not knowing it. But now I do. Thank you to both Illumin Phoenix and Dave Wagner for pointing this out. And Dave, on top of that, pointed out that in Nightly, there is actually a function that is coming called Map Windows, which is the you know, moral equivalent of our adjacent transform in C++ and our deltas. And so we can now, if we use nightly, turn our tuple windows and map into a single call to map windows, which is why, folks, Rust wins. Yes, the sorted by, it's not great. But as many folks pointed out and argued in the comment section of the previous video, this is due to more safety and the fact that NANDs can't be officially sorted by the IEEE. We all know it, folks. Is it a little bit unfortunate that this is the way we have to spell it? Yes, but it doesn't matter. We have an all equal function. We have a map windows in nightly Rust win, folks, which brings us to our Haskell solution, which I'm not sure which is a bigger oversight, folks. The fact that I didn't know all equal in Rust, but it was actually probably leaving out Haskell. This was when I initially coded up the Haskell solution for this response video, the solution that I came up with. You read bottom to top, you sort your elements first, then you do a map adjacent with minus to get the differences, then you do map adjacent minus again to get the differences of those differences, which should all be zero if you have an arithmetic progression. You sum those zeros up, and if it's equal to zero, then you have an arithmetic progression. I kid you not, this is what I coded because you could do something else with a reduction or none or any, but the problem is, is that you need Booleans in order for those to work, and right now we're dealing with integers. Anyways, folks, this is not very nice. So I decided to go to Hoogle, not Hoogle Translate, but the original inspiration for the name Hoogle, which is a function search engine for Haskell, just to double check that there wasn't an all equal. And sure enough, when I type in, I didn't even need to type in the full thing, folks, all eek, there it is. And to my disbelief, it's sitting in data.list.ht, which is my favorite Haskell library. And this is where map adjacent sits. 
So I was like, how is it possible that I missed this? I have to go add it to Google Translate. And guess what, folks? It was in Google Translate already. I, at one point, knew about the fact that Haskell had this function. And then not only did I forget about it, but I showed this screen in the previous video and completely missed the fact that Haskell's all equal was sitting there. You need to know your algorithms, folks, including me. And you can't forget them. You gotta know them then, you gotta know them now. I apologize to the Haskell folks. So if we go back to our previous Haskell solution, this is what it should actually be, which in my opinion is even more beautiful than Rust. And originally, this video was just gonna be called Rust Wins, but then in preparing the Haskell solution, and thank goodness I checked to see if there was an all equal, Haskell also wins. Rust wins, Haskell wins. These two solutions are, in my opinion, the most beautiful, and WeWa is up there as well, folks. But they don't have an all equal explicitly. You can spell it in four characters. So Rust, Haskell, both win. And that brings us to last but not least, the J solution. So here we are in the J playground. We're gonna do this rather quickly. We have our sort idiom, which gives us our sorted sequence of elements. Then we can do the two less than slash to get the boxed pairs of adjacent elements. And if we replace this enclose with a minus reduction, we're gonna end up with our deltas, which is quite nice. And now we need to get the unique values which you use uh, this primitive, which is called the nub, which apparently is another name for deduplicate or deduplicate. And then once we have our deduplicated values, we want to check whether the length is equal to one. So this is okay. Not as beautiful as WeWa or the APLs in my opinion. And you can turn this into an explicit function quite easily if you get rid of the spaces to make it as short as possible, which may or may not be a good idea. And you use the double braces. This is now a function. It gets a little bit unwieldy for lack of a better word when you try to do this tacitly. So let's go back to this. And at this point, if we put this in parens is the nicest way to check that this is tacit. All right, let's go back a few steps. As you see, I always get confused when doing tacit programming in J. This is our valid tacit code for now. We've got a unary function here and a binary function followed by a scalar, which is an AGH fork. However, when we try to add nub, AKA deduplicate, it fails because it treats the two train which effectively you can treat this as a unary function. So this is a unary function, but it's gonna treat this as the S combinator, but we want it to be the B combinator, so you have to use cap. And then when we add copy, we need to do the cap trick again. So this is gonna give us one, and then we do one equals. So figuring out where to insert these caps is always confusing. And yes, there are ways to use the at symbol, but I have never mastered that. Anyways, that's the reason I left off J because in my opinion, both uh, this solution, if we put the little comment syntax, and then uh, if we go back and get the explicit function, neither of these is great, in my opinion. The tacit is, I guess, one character shorter, but then the explicit, if you completely remove all spaces, is one character shorter. Anyways, that's J for you folks. I'm not a J pro. That's why I left it out, but I won't in the future because I do not want to upset my J viewers. Thanks for watching. Hope you learned something. Thank you once again to Dave and Illumin Phoenix for pointing out that I had missed the Rust All Equal. And thank you to the Haskell folks for saying that I missed out Haskell because it has probably the most beautiful solution of all. Once again, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed. Hope you learned something and have a great day.